Am I allowed to swear? Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Warning, the following video is for mature adult audiences only. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey everybody, I'm Asian Funk. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, in this video, I'm joined by a very, very special guest. Uh, she is a world famous actor, writer, and voiceover artist. Uh, she's appeared in feature films, in, uh, tons of anime, uh, commercials, TV shows, and video games. Uh, the one, the only, Kate Bristol. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> Thank you for having me. What an intro. I am oh, man. so flattered. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, again, thank you so much for being here. I'm super excited um, and just really honored to get to speak with you for a little bit. Of course, thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, have you done a ton of these virtual interviews or is this one of your first ones? Um, not on video. I've done ones that were call-in or Skype meetings, um, mm -hmm. but this is my first one in a very long time that's with me in it. Like, <laughs> right, right, like full, full face. Been a while since I've done video, like in person interviews that are not cool. just awesome. So I want to like dive into the, you know, the the tea a little bit. Um, why hasn't anyone <laughs> ever asked you about your telescope? <laughs> my telescope. So just for for those of you who are watching on my bio on Twitter, it said ask me about my telescope, and no one ever has. And I think because why, why are people going to ask about my telescope? So I, if this is my nerdy hobby, I know from one nerdy hobby enthusiast to another, right? Yeah, <laughs> so totally. Nerdy hobby is astronomy, um, not astrology, astronomy, which yep. is the real science one. Yes. And it just means I'm really into looking at stars and space and reading about it. Um, I don't know why anyone's that never asked me about my telescope. Not a whole lot of people are into telescopes. It seems like an old man hobby. And it kind of is, based on the forums I go to. Um, but I will tell you about my telescope. So it's a four and a half aperture Newtonian reflector telescope on a Dobsonian mount. And I would bring it out, but the problem is it's holding up part of my voiceover booth in my closet. Interesting. <laughs> and it's heavy. And when the pandemic started and all of us actors had to scramble to make home studios, mm -hmm. I bought these foam insulator boards and I was sculpting one in my closet and so i had to put my telescope lives up in my closet and i had to use the handle and tie a piece of string to hold up the top of my booth so that's where it is right now <laughs> wow okay so it's serving as also like a room uh prop up item yes yes it is holding my booth together quite literally <laughs> interesting interesting um but it, it's good it's a good it's a good scope it's pretty cool and um, yeah, yeah. I have some extra eyepieces that let me see the moons of Jupiter. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. So I wasn't <laughs> pretty, pretty cool. Then I actually had to Google just as like research, like <laughs> really expensive um, commercial uh, telescopes in case like I had to name one or something. And <laughs> and I was like, this is silly. She probably doesn't have one. And then it turns out that you you legit do. So I'm. Oh, I'm she does sick. have a telescope. Yes, yeah. and I would show it. Um, so there's two kinds of telescopes. There's refractor and reflector. And so refractors are the one that you think of like, like a pirate on a ship, like they're long. Those are refractor telescopes. And reflector telescopes are big, fat, chunky boys that um, have to, yeah. it's, it does what it sounds like, it reflects. So it's got, it's this big empty space with two mirrors in it that are aligned so that when you look at the eyepiece, they're meant to see kind of deep space yes. stuff. Right, right, right. Um, but everything you see is upside down, which is fine. Um. Yeah, which is crazy, right? Well, they, they say that yeah. also like uh, your eyes do that where it's actually mirroring things in reverse. So does that actually mean you're seeing things upside down? Like the world's yes, actually world upside, upside down, down, but you're seeing- I don't know, we may never know. <laughs> yeah, wow. But it's, um, a, it's a good scope and it's yeah. a good, I think, starter telescope. That's cool. I was not expecting to get schooled on Telescopes um, in this. In this uh, oh shoot, she interview. actually does have a telescope. Yeah, now I regret. I should have like. Hobby. Yeah. I'm that's... reading fantasy books, so. Awesome. Yeah. So that was actually going to be my next question. Is like during this this time of um, staying indoors, have you gained any new hobbies or interests, or mm. um, you know, there's like a wave of people for a while doing banana bread, so. 
Yeah, uh, you know what? I'm I was already a baker pre-pandemic, so I didn't I, yeah, I didn't yeah. like venture more into baking. Um, I did buy a skateboard. Oh, cool! Which seems like a very like quarter life crisis mom thing to do. Sure, sure. Because <laughs> I brought my daughter a scooter so that we can play outside, and I was like, well, "Why does she get to have all the fun? I want a skateboard." So I bought mm. a skateboard, and I've been I, I skateboarded a little as a preteen, but now I'm like trying to relearn it again as yeah, a yeah. grown up adult. And it's fun, you know, I think everyone should skateboard, it's fun. Totally, is it one of those like uh, mini skateboards, like the half boards or is it like- the No, it's board? not a penny board, it's, um, oh, I wish I had that one too, it's in the garage. Um, so it's a mini long board. I did a lot of research before I uh, bought it. So you can't do tricks on it because it's got these really beefy wheels. Mm. Um, it's just made for going straight, which gotcha, is all I gotcha. need. I just want to yeah. cruise down the street and be like, Mee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not trying to do like any uh, tricks or anything. No. Yeah. <laughs> At least not it. Yeah. I know my limits. <laughs> right, right. Um, so uh, one of my questions, since you said you were into uh, astronomy, uh, if you could voice any Sailor Moon character, <gasps> who would you pick? Sailor Moon. <laughs> oh, okay. That's, you know, it's funny. In my head, I was like, I think she might pick Luna or Artemis because you do a lot of non-human character voices and so in my head I was like she would definitely pick oh, the cats mm. but I, you're right, you're right. I mean, that's what I was gonna say but I mean I don't know why I'm not, I'm surprised that you picked Sailor Moon because you know of course I know you like traveling what are some of the places that you are gonna visit first as soon as things open up and it's safe like what what are some of the go-to places you have like that you were gonna go to have you been on my Instagram because I was just talking about this and this is something that i ask people all the time. I'm like, where mm -hmm. do you want to go when pandemic's over? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is my favorite thing. Oh my goodness. Um, I really want to bring my daughter to Taiwan. Um, mm -hmm. My husband is Taiwanese Chinese. And so we have a lot of family in Taiwan who I've never met. And so oh. I thought it'd be really fun to bring my daughter to Asia and go to Taiwan and meet family. That's, that's kind of the big, big trip that we're working towards in the future. Um, I also love Hawaii. I've yeah. been there once. It was awesome. Yeah. I love Montreal. Yeah, those are, um, those are good places. You know, mm -hmm. Canada, Hawaii, you, got, you, you have like the beaches and then you have like, you know, a uh, big city and then you have sort of like, um, city. yeah, you have the place that's really far away. Why is the New York City bagel and coffee shop the best place for bagels? <laughs> They say it's something about the salt water, like they use salt water for the bagels. I don't know the specifics because I've never myself made bagels. Mm -hmm. I just know that they're really good. You know, growing up in Texas, I thought bagels were just round bread and I was so wrong. They're, they're like thick, chewy, almost sour doughy, but not sour doughy. Someone's gonna come at me for that. Mm -hmm. um, just this good, thick, chewy, salty dough. And then everyone has their own bagel order, like your specific, like your bagel order mm -hmm. and the amount of ways you can customize a bagel in a New York deli while they're yelling at you like, what do you want? And then it's um, the pressure, right? Yeah. The pressure to get what you want. They're, they're really good. I don't know how yeah, to, yeah. mine, I always get an everything bagel with lox spread where the smoked salmon is chopped up in the cream mm -hmm. cheese. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that, yeah. That sounds good. Um, yep. That's my favorite spot. New York yeah. city bagel and coffee. Yeah. 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 Which is good. That's probably really good for like internet searches. It probably comes up often. True or false? Um, you were 11 when you first got your first voice acting gig? True. True. Is that, can you tell me a little bit about that? Yes. So my first ever um, voiceover job was when I was 11 years old. It was 2001, uh, which tells you how old I am. I'm 30, <laughs> which means that as of next year, I will be have doing this for 20 years. I will have been doing this for 20 years. It is crazy. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, so I was 11 and um, I did like local community theater just for fun, but this was when Funimation was a lot smaller of a company and they got this new show called Fruits Basket and they wanted actual children to be the children in the show. Huh. So it was, I think me and one other boy who um, were accepted at this open audition that I don't remember how I found out about, um, but my mom drove me and, <laughs> and then I got it. And so I was like, oh, this is cool. And um, I just thought it was a really fun after school job. 
yeah, who knew it would be, you know, kind of like this lifelong career. And it, yeah. That's, yeah, that's crazy. Uh, so you also posted a picture of a Funimation cast party shirt. Um, <laughs> and you, yeah. were, you said that you were 12 years old. Um, can you talk about that party? Okay, so if it was 2002, then I was 12 years old, and the 2002 Funimation cast party was, again, this was when the company was a lot smaller and it was fewer people. My recollection of this is that it was at a bar, like a bar and grill. It had like pool tables, mm -hmm. and I don't remember how I got to go. I think I only went for like half an hour because it's at a bar. What am I going to do, right? And I'm like, hey, sure, mom, sure. you drive me to the cast party? So she took me to this bar. It was like a Friday night or something. And I just remember being like, cool, I'm 12. <laughs> like, yeah, I'll I didn't have a know please. anyone else because I wasn't an employee or I didn't, I only knew the director and like one other person. I was like, yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks for the shirt. I'm going home to right. do my homework or whatever. That's right, that's right. <laughs> that's my uh, recollection. When you were doing your voiceover work, uh, were you normally doing it alone? or with other voice actors? Like, I don't know anything about the voice acting industry and how it's actually done, but so is that your over, It is normally done alone. There are instances where you will work with other people. Usually it's called a group record or a group walla session. Mm -hmm. Walla means background noise or background shatter. Okay. So a lot of times if there's a big crowd scene or like a stadium or something, they'll have, they'll put six or seven people, people in a booth and say, all right, we're gonna ad lib you're at a baseball game, have fun, talk for 30 seconds. And so they'll tick, 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 chatter. And so that will be a group session. But 90% of the time you're in there by yourself and you go in and the director and engineer are outside of the booth at their computers. And of course, this is all how it was before the pandemic. Now everyone's doing it from home, right. um, which is much harder and a lot less fun. But um, pre-pandemic, this is how it went. So you would be in a room with a screen and that had the cartoon playing for you and you right. have a script um, sometimes a physical script sometimes on an ipad you know and it's hanging up and then you they beep you in and you do your thing do you have a routine or a thing you do before you go into uh doing a voice do you have like a a thing that you, helps you get into character or do you you know uh, what do singers do they gargle lemon water or something i don't know i don't know what they actually do but like yeah like, do you have a thing different exercises you can do. <laughs> I've been told to eat sour green apples before sessions sometimes if you have a lot of like mouth noise. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I mean, sour green apples can reduce mouth noise. I don't normally do that. What I do is I have some exercises that I've kept over the years from when I took voice lessons. If I have to be in a voice that's really, really high, I usually have to do this thing where I inhale and go, and then it makes, it makes my voice easier to go wow. higher. Okay. Wow. <laughs> so like, oh, yeah, that's, like that a, totally like a small yeah. Pokemon or something. I'll, I'll be sitting there in the booth like, wow, that was, that was really cool. Yeah. 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 <laughs> is that, is that something that you learned like that you just like taught yourself or is that something you had to research? Like if, when you're coming up with voices that don't exist or you, you know, like come up uh, with uh, come up with a sound for this Pokemon that you, that has never made a sound before. Do you how do you prepare for that? Well, it's different when it comes to Pokemon. They normally have a very clear intention with what they want certain creatures to sound like. Hmm. So a lot of times you'll go in a booth and work with the director, and you'll take like five or six tries to be like, hey, let's, let's pitch it up, let's pitch it down, let's try this. So you try different things with the director and that's normally how kind of creating a particular Pokemon voice works, which is kind of how other roles work. You'll audition for a role, mm -hmm. for example, and make up a voice for it. And then the director or the client, whoever's doing the casting in that case will decide, hey, I like what this actor did with this or, I like this actor, but I don't like this voice. Can you ask them to try this or something like that? So it's usually a very collaborative effort. Mm. It's not just one person saying, I'm going to do it this way. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Because I'm assuming they're giving you what they think, but then, you know, you're actually the one who has to 
make it real. And then maybe when they realize they hear it and they're like, oh, that's not what I thought. So yeah, that makes sense. It's collaborative. Um, so speaking of Pokemon voices, you did the first ever English voice, English speaking voice for Pikachu. Yes. Um, in the Pokemon, the movie, I choose you, which is a mm -hmm. very tough title to say. Um, Pokemon, the movie, I choose you. Yes. Yes. Right. Uh, yeah. Colon, <laughs> I choose you, which, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about the process and what you were trying to achieve um, in trying to come up with the voice for Pikachu? Okay, so this was several years ago and at the time when I was working for Pokemon, everyone already knew that I was like a Pokemon super fan. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I know it's probably cool to be like, oh, I'm in it, but I don't watch it. And I'm like, no, I love Pokemon. Like, huh. you don't understand. Like, yeah, this yeah. Is my childhood. I'm so into it. Yeah. Um, so it was different from previous Pokemon recording sessions in the sense that more staff from the official Pokemon company were present. It was kind of a big deal recording this movie. They wanted it to be very much the way that they wanted which was cool it was fine like we had it was it was more official so to speak it wasn't yeah, just yeah. me and the director this time it, there was a lot of input so i they showed me the scene and they're like okay pikachu is going to speak english in this scene and i'm like well it's big and they're like yeah it's big yeah so it took a long time because we really wanted to make sure the emotional intent was present um and the official, I believe the official canon reason for Pikachu speaking is that uh, the emotions were so high and he was so connected to Ash that, or it, I'm sorry, Pikachu is, as of canon, genderless. So mm -hmm. um, Pikachu, they, uh, they were just so moved and attached to Ash that in that moment they were able to speak. Um, hmm. So the Japanese voice of Pikachu, who does 99.99% of all Pikachu-related things, I think it's I Itue Okani or Ikue Otani. It's one of those two. Yeah, and yeah. I'm so sorry that I don't remember the official. No, I, sounded so good she, to me. She, um, she's also the voice of Chopper in One Piece. So, and, and that, if wow. you hear it, it sounds very Pikachu-like in that it's high and squeaky and cute and precious. So when she did her, her Pikachu voice for that movie, um, it was very easy for her because she's already up there and it sounded very Pikachu-like. So I think my job was to interpret into English as close to her version as I could. Personally, that's how I saw it. Yeah, yeah. I needed to, I needed to get up in that range. <laughs> I needed to amp up the cute and kind <laughs> of pay homage to her interpretation of that. Wow. Because she is, by all, by all means, the Pikachu queen. Sure, sure. Um, <laughs> and what was the reaction by fans? Because I, you said that you were in a theater watching the movie with an audience. Um, Am I allowed to swear? Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah, totally. But, okay. Yes. So we were in the theater with the cast. And oh, okay. What's really funny is we went to go see it as a cast just, you know, bought tickets and went to the Times Square yeah, yeah. movie theater. And I don't think anyone else in the theater knew that we were the cast because, you know, no one knows what we look like. So we're all just sure. chilling in our row. And then Pikachu speaks and I'm sitting there like, oh, no, oh, it's here it comes. Yep. I know it's coming. And I'm like, oh, and it's always weird to hear yourself. It always is weird. So I'm sitting there going, oh, no, here it comes. And then Pikachu spoke. And the audience went, you what the fuck? <laughs> and all these people were like, what? Was that? It was very, it was a little polarizing. I think, I think a lot of people were shocked and mm -hmm. didn't quite know what to make of it. I know yeah, one yeah. was like, it's terrible. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, well, it's crazy because, um, you know, the, I, it's like, you, you did this in 2017, right? Mm. And you, you only had like, what, two lines? How many actual words did Pikachu say? Do you remember? It wasn't, that, it wasn't a lot, right? No, it was really short. Uh, they said, it's because, it's because I always want to be with you. And when Pikachu, they're explaining why they don't want to be in the Pokeball. Um, mm. yeah, that was it. yeah, right. I was very proud of it. I think it's sure. awesome. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that, and so that's the crazy thing, right? Like you, yeah, it was just those few words and like everyone's freaking out. And then, you know, two years later, you have Ryan Reynolds voicing Pikachu for an hour and a half and no one says So I guess you could anything. say me and Ryan Reynolds have shared a role. Totally. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. That is absolutely true. We're basically best friends. So. Right. So I'm thinking, I think because of you, you made it okay for him. I wouldn't say that. I know people on the internet <laughs> were joking for years that um, Danny DeVito should voice Pikachu. Like they just, oh, you man. remember that? Like was, yeah, uh, that's a good way of putting it. I took, I took the, uh, the brunt of the oh, right. God, Pikachu speaks so that yeah, you yeah, yeah. have a whole movie. So for you're sure. welcome, Ryan Reynolds. You're, you're very welcome. Yeah, yeah. You've been a part of the Pokemon franchise for a long time. You were the voice of a character in a Smash Brothers game, right? You were the female Pokemon the trainer. Female Pokemon trainer. Yeah. How, how did that come about? It's a very dramatic and long story. And by that, I mean, I was sitting in the Pokemon recording studio lounge area and a director who's a friend of mine came out and was like, you, can you come do something for me real quick? And I was like, yeah, what's up? What do you need? And he's like, I don't know what this is. Um, they didn't give us a title. Can you just read this for me? And then we'll play around with the voice. And I was like, yeah. So I went in and I start reading it and I'm like, this is Smash. And he's like, what? What is that? And I'm like, this is Smash Brothers. Like, I know what these moves are, the things that I have to say. And he's like, first of all, I don't know what that is. Second of all, they didn't tell me what this is. So just do it. And I'm like, yo, this is totally Smash Brothers though. And then, so I recorded it and he was like, okay, thanks. That's great. You know, we'll, we'll yeah, you. we'll let you know. Yeah. And I'm like, that was Smash Brothers. And he's like, no, it wasn't. And then guess what it was. <laughs> that is amazing. Was that, so they didn't tell you what it was. When did you find it was, out? It was, it was very under wraps for a very long time because yeah, this yeah. was way before the game was ever announced. Right. Um, they wanted to have everything, I guess, recorded and done before they even went into like promoting the game or anything sure. like that. So it was very, very, very early on. It was many years ago. Not yeah. many years ago, but at least a year before the game was announced. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Um, and, you know, I'm wearing a... I see that's that. Yeah. Sure. Hey. yeah. The, the problem with these um, virtual things is that I have I always have these shirts I'm wearing that are themed with who I'm talking to, and you can never oh. see for whatever reason. You gotta show I, them up. You gotta be like, look, look. I there. know. Well, I don't want to be like, hey, check out my shirt. Uh, <laughs> even though I've done that, I've done that a few times. Um, but yeah, so I'm always like slowly trying to sit up so that you can see the graphic mm -hmm. on the t-shirt, trying to be subtle. Are you um, Are you good at the game? Because I'm awful. Uh, I, I, I used to play a lot of it in college, so I was really good at, uh, I don't know which version it was, um, was it Brawl for the GameCube? I think that's what it was. Okay. So this was, this was like a decade ago. Um, mm. but yeah, I have not played it since. I went to E3 one year and they, they were, they had this game because I beat somebody and they gave me a t-shirt for winning. So that's where hey. I got the shirt from. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I'm terrible at it now definitely not that good um are you a gamer i i want to say no i play games right i'm no good at any of them sure yeah and i have very weird taste in games like oh. what, is, what does that mean <laughs> i don't think i don't think i should call myself a gamer because i'm just bad at them i i've been playing animal crossing like everyone else in the planet with my daughter um, my daughter calls it hoo hoo game. And the reason is when you go into the museum during the daytime and you talk to the owl, the owl wakes up and he goes, hoo, she thinks that's hilarious. She's two years old. Mm. So she's like, hoo hoo game, hoo hoo game. That's, and all she ever wants so to do is wake up the owl. Got it. So you're playing so that she has fun, not because you're, or it, that's more for, is it for both of you or is it more like, it's for, yeah. it's, it's for me, but she enjoys watching. So Got I'm it. like, it's a, that's, play game? yeah, because I want, yeah, you're like, because I want to play. So that's that's no, kind of a nice. Come on, mommy, mommy, some video games. Yeah, yeah. Um, when was the last time you listened to your uh, demo on your website? Oh no! Oh, um, longer than I should have because I need to re-record it. I recorded my demo in my closet in New Jersey. Got the, oh, you mean this one that I'm going to play right now? No. 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 You don't want me? No. It, <laughs> Is it the commercial demo or the animation demo? the commercial demo 
Oh no. Yeah, that one I recorded in my closet in New Jersey with an old mic that I don't really use anymore. <laughs> really? Well, because mm -hmm. I, I listened to it recently and it, it's really good. Oh, thank you. It's really good. Can I play it? You can. Okay. All right. I'm going to play it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> a healthy lifestyle shouldn't be a compromise on great taste. Fiber One 90 calorie bars are a delicious, rich, and chewy snack with 90 calories and 20% of your daily value of fiber in each bar. Fiber. Now you yep. can have what you crave with Fiber One. Great. What do we want? Cat facts. When do we want them? This one's my favorite. <laughs> Everything you need to ready, set, go back to school at Target. Okay. This is what I needed to make to get an agent. <laughs> no. So I needed to show range and I. Yeah wrote some copy and I found some copy online and I cobbled it together with GarageBand because I wasn't even paying yeah. for audio software at the time. Wait, so these were, these were not, these were not paid gigs. These were, this was just you. No, no. Everything oh. on that demo that you just listened to is, I mixed it myself in my apartment. <laughs> That's incredible. We're going to keep listening though. Oh no. <laughs> Why trust There's still like 45 seconds left. I won't torture you. <laughs> I won't. So yeah, none of those at the time were paid gigs. Mm -hmm. I just mixed those together and yeah. then submitted it to get a commercial agent. And then once I got a commercial agent, then I could book. And yeah, I, I, for anyone who would like to get into voiceover work, please don't do it yourself at home. Like pay someone to professionally mix it for you. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I, I tell that to everyone. I'm like, don't do what I did. Just don't, don't mix it at home in your closet. Like, pay someone and get a good one. Gotcha. Yeah. What's the um, what is the best piece of advice that someone has given you about voice acting? Hmm. Is that first and foremost, it's acting. It's yes, it's a niche, but if you set out just with the mindset of I'm just going to be a voice actor, then it's not really getting the meat of it. It's act, at, at its core, it's acting. Um, and you have to be able to convey the right emotions and the right depth of character for basically any job that you book. Um, so it's not just making funny voices and it's not just like impressions. People think it's just impressions. It's, it's really not. So it's, it's really, you got you to gotta convey feelings. <laughs> that's that's great I, I i agree with that what is the best audition for a role that you didn't get every season of pokemon for a human character that i really liked <laughs> huh like in the previous seasons um the one where they were in alola i really wanted to play one of ash's human friends because they were all really cool they were really really great characters and no shade. Everyone who booked those roles is amazing. You know, I know them. I love them. They're wonderful people. I really wanted to be a human character. It's okay because I got to be a Pokemon friend of Ash. That was right, one right. I wanted to be that I didn't get. And again, disappointment is the name of the game. Like, don't get into acting unless you can eat rejection for breakfast, like, mm. every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Interesting. So even, even when you're already, you know, uh, giving a voice to a character in a show or whatever, you still have to audition for, an, really? Okay, wow, I didn't know oh, You always have to re-audition yeah. for the roles. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Huh. Um, if you could voice a Powerpuff Girl, which one would you choose? Bubbles. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, okay, I don't even know why. That was a silly question. Um, if you could, if you could, cooler. <laughs> if you could voice a Disney princess, which one would you choose? I would love to be a Disney princess. Like, oh my God, I would love to be a Disney princess so bad. Um, if I had to be a pre-existing princess, I don't know, my favorite is, well, this is a difficult question. I would want to voice a new princess. Mm, okay. One that was appropriate for me to play. Yeah, yeah, um, that's fair. My favorite Disney princess is not a princess, it's Mulan. Um, mm -hmm. She's just a warrior, she's badass. She's not right, really right. a princess. Yeah, yeah. Um, Moana's badass, but again, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to voice those. I would want to voice someone, someone new, someone cool. Who knows? Yeah. Someone okay. <laughs> cool. I, I like that. That's a great answer. Um, 
which actress would you want to play you in a movie about your life? I mean, okay. I love Sir Ronan, but if I'm really being honest with myself, I think it would be like Anna Kendrick. <laughs> Interesting. But like Anna Kendrick, like plus 30 pounds. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> she's little and I'm a mom. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. she's awkward like me, you know, she's got that like spazzy nerd girl thing going on. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I like that. If you could voice any Marvel superhero character, who would it be? Squirrel Girl. That is an amazing choice. I know that you interviewed, was it the creator of Squirrel Girl? I did, yeah. That yeah. was really cool. Squirrel oh, thank girl. you, thank you. Think, yeah. But I also want to voice the squirrels, you oh, know? That'd be, that'd be great. Yes, yes, because she does have a, a squirrel companion, mm -hmm. um, which is now a female squirrel. So that could go. work. I want to voice Squirrel um, Girl and her squirrels. Yeah, that's good. That's really good. I'm going to write that down. Um, do you, do you have time for a quick game? I do, yeah? yes! Okay, great, great. Let's play a game. Okay, are you ready? Mm-hmm. All right, go ahead, open your eyes. I'm not. No, you can open them now. Okay. Okay, cool. Oh, it's so, me! It do! Yes. <laughs> so this game is called Pokemon Can You Name Them All? Oh, all right. yes, okay. So this, this is a pretty simple game. Um, do you remember in the show, like before they would go to a commercial break, they would try and make Who's these guesses? that Pokemon? Exactly, exactly. So um, I wanted to honor that by making you guess the name of a Pokemon that you have voiced. Oh, yay! Okay, then I and should guess. Okay. Yeah, you, right. yeah. Um, and I'm going yeah, yeah. to be honest. When I was putting this together, I could not name most of the Pokemon that you have voiced because I did not follow the show after like the second generation of Pokemon. So I get that most um, people our age, I'm guessing you're a millennial like me. Absolutely. Um, we kind of stopped watching, I want to say like middle school, which was yep. when second gen was just coming out, like Bay yep. and stuff. Yes. But, I mean, first 150, I feel like most people our age oh, are yeah. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cake, you know. Yeah. Can name like 95% of the first gen guys, but there's I cannot. There's a lot, there's a lot, it's hard. There is, it's like, there's 800, I had to look that up. Um, okay, are you ready? I am. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna start it off pretty easy. Uh, sorry. Are, exactly. So these aren't just gonna be Pokemon. These are gonna be just characters in the Pokemon world because you've done both human and mm -hmm. uh, non-human. Um, okay. So uh, let's see if you got, you, who did you say this was? Nurse Joy. Nurse Joy, let's find out. You are correct. Welcome right. to the Pokemon Center. That's, <laughs> wow, that is fantastic. Um, and just so you know, we're not, there's no score. So don't worry. Uh, oh, you're no, winner. I'm gonna win. There is you're... a score. There's totally oh a score, Mark. Okay. Right? Wow. I'm gonna. I should have. I should have made this more competitive then. Um, Nurse Joy. I joke that Nurse Joy is my AT and T voice. I haven't done AT and T work, but that's my. Thank you for calling. Your call is very important to us. That's. It's like that vibe. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I should have photoshopped a phone in her hand. Um, that would have been made more sense. Okay, are you ready for the next one? Yes. Okay, it's gonna get a little tougher. I have no idea. No? Take it's me. It's Pikachu. Pikachu? You're wrong. It's Ryan Reynolds. Oh, um, god damn it. <laughs> no, no. You're, yeah. I should have put a hat on him to make it a little more Ryan tricky. Reynolds. But, um, okay. We're going we're gonna to go to the next one. Okay. Okay. Pokemaru. Dang it. Wow. Okay. So, uh, yeah. I was like, she'll know this one because you voiced this Pokemon a lot. This like, was the, this was my Alola boy. This was my Alola character. Okay. So yeah, so this, you're familiar with this, mm -hmm. this little guy. Um, okay. Great. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's go to the next one. Persian. Yeah, yeah. Although this is the um, Kanto yes. Persian. I, the Persian that I voiced was the Alolan, which is like a dark psychic anyway. Ah, okay, okay. I like that. So you, yeah, when you said you were a Pokemon nerd, I was like, okay, I should have made these more difficult. Um, no, 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 I'm sure. Oh, this is oh, Cliff Fable. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Not Clefairy, Cliff Fable. Yes, correct, correct. Which you also did. You, you did um, Cliff Fairy too, right? Maybe at one point. That was one that was, that was probably one of those roles that I, I of course, wasn't the original because I was not living in New York at the, when Pokemon started or doing mm -hmm. this, but 
Clefairy. I don't know. Maybe. Can't mm. remember. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, you, like I said, you've been a part of this thing for a while, so it makes sense then. Sorry, there's thunder outside. My dog's freaking out. Yeah. Okay. Ah, Leaf. Yep. Well, it's funny because I was trying to figure out her real name, and I guess... Pokemon trainer. I yeah. guess it's Leaf. No, you're, yeah, you're right. And I didn't but actually it, know that until after people started talking about the game. And I was like, oh, I guess she has a name. Like yeah. it popped up on IMDb. Right. Well, I found that out after I'd made this and I was like, ah, oh, crap. So anyway. No, it's my, you, oh my God, you're winning. <laughs> Please. No, you're, yeah, okay. So you're already winning. Um, let's, let's step it up. Okay. It's going to get serious now. Peck, picky peck, picky peck, picky peck, yeah. yes! I had to think about this one, because I remember it. the session for it. I remember being like, pick, 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 and I was like, pick, what is that? Pick, pick, what would that be? I had to go back to the session and, man, okay. Is that, so when you're usually making these sounds or coming up with the sound or the voices, mm -hmm. do they, is one of, is some of the direction you get is that the name of the Pokemon must be in the sound? So yes and no, but it's more complex. People think, oh, they just say their names. It's technically more complicated than that. They, they say a Pokemon isn't saying its name. They make a sound that happens to sound like what they are called. Ah, uh, okay. There's, I guess, a distinction there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yes, you do have to incorporate what it's called. And usually it makes sense. It's yeah, yeah. Of, like a rock or something. And you're like, what does a rock sound like? Right. Usually grunty. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, okay. A pile wow. of garbage. There's a Pokemon that's just a pile of garbage. So. Right. So interesting. So if someone were to, if you had the chance to uh, make a voice, like what would you, how would you even get into the mindset of a, trashy Pokemon. I mean, I know it sounds terrible, but um, like, do you, is it all, any voice, any sound you make is all coming from you, right? You're not using any uh, sound effects. You're not doing any, you know, Yeah, uh, usually external. it's just the actor. Sometimes they'll toy with things in post. Mm. Um, okay. I don't know, hard to explain. <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. Yeah. All right, you ready for the next one? It's gonna, it's only gonna get tougher. All right, I'm down. Skitty. Oh, man. <laughs> okay, we're gonna. A rack is something. A rack. I only did this like once or twice. This wasn't, yeah. I wasn't the main person for this. It was a rack right. is something. Right? Am I right? You're close. Is that your final answer? Yes. You're close. Spin rack. You're close. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And you're right. The, the, the last few have been ones where you only voice maybe once or twice. All right. These are tough. So, All right. I got yeah. you. Okay. This is cool. This is cool. Yeah. yeah. I Come was on. serious. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, Carbink. Hey. Carbink from Diancie in the cocoon of destruction. Wow. Yeah. So I did not even know that these Pokemon existed. Like when I was like, who the heck is Carbink? So I had to like look it up and Honey, okay. that's also a rock. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> what does uh, what does carbing sound like then? Because it hops, so it it sounds kind uh, of like because it's a bunny gemstone. It sounds kind of like the clinking of a hopping uh, rock. So got it. Do they do they show you uh, the way these Pokemon move? And, that, mm -hmm. and does that help you? Or yeah, 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 that's you, okay. yeah. They always have a screen in front of you. So when you're dubbing, you can always see the animation because it's already done. So yeah, yeah, got it. To see the picture. Mm -hmm. Gotcha, okay, cool. All right. I'm sorry if you're, you're hearing thunder because um, you know, we're near the hurricane. So we're getting some of the residual yeah, that's right. of that. That's right. Texas is having a tough time. Um, Okay, well, let's let's speed this up because I know you're a couple hours ahead of me. Um, all right. Oh, friend, I think you have stumped me. Yes. I did this one. Are you sure? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, I mean, according to IMDb, you did. It it looks moth-like. Um, I give up. What's it called? Rabombi. Rabombi. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, I'll, it's cute. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm assuming it's a mix between a ribbon rainbow and a B. Yeah, 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 you're right. You know what? You've got me. I thought this was going to be a piece of cake, and mm -hmm. you have, uh... They, okay, I think there may be one more. Okay. Are you, okay, this is your last one. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. you, can, you can totally redeem yourself and win this whole thing if you get the next mm -hmm. one. Okay. Oh, that's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> is that your final answer? I'm trying to get clues. Okay, I remember the big sign on his nose. Mm -hmm. I remember that it's underwater. I think it's a sea cucumber. Yeah, that, that would- Don't yeah. remember, don't remember. I'm so no? sorry. I can remember okay. which movie it's from. Yeah. It was in an underwater scene and Ash was right. swimming. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what it was called. I don't remember oh what it was God. called. I'm gonna so. be in such hot water over this. People are gonna be like, she doesn't even know Pokemon. <laughs> I'm like, it's true. I guarantee I you. I tell you what the moons of Jupiter are. No, so yeah, right, right. Well, I can guarantee you, a lot of people probably could not guess this to save their lives. So I'm just right. gonna, let's just end this. <laughs> oh, Pukumuku! Yeah. No, I remember, now I remember Pukumuku because the director, Lisa Ortiz, was getting on to me because I wasn't pronouncing it right. I was like, Pukumuku? She was like, no, yeah. Pukumuku. It's not like mucus, it's like Pukumuku. It's something Hawaiian-ish. Okay. Oh, okay, that makes sense. That makes Puku sense. Muku. Yeah, I was, like, I was puke, like, like puke, puku muku. Right, well, is it pu? Like, I thought maybe it, may, it emitted a smell because it's pu. Puku but muku. I guess the way you pronounce it, it's puku muku. Yeah, puku that, muku. That no, I think, it has, I think this is one like togedemaru where they kept something closer yeah. to the original Japanese. Right, like, right, right. Togedemaru, yes. puku muku. Yeah, I think that was. Gotcha. The Japanese is a little rough. Yeah, yeah. Well, it definitely, yeah. I'm pretty sure that is not an American, uh, American name. But okay. I'm this kid, Puku Muku. Okay. That's right. Or just P-U. Yeah. Um, Puku. Pu because yeah. that might be a Japanese onomatopoeia. Pu. Ah. Pu. Yeah, it might be like like a sea cucumber. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. That that makes sense. Um, just I, a guess. I think you're right. <laughs> I, and I think that's it. What's the next one? Oh, yes. I've been, so that was the end of the game. Um, congratulations, you won. Yay! Um, and so I, uh, I've seen these green teal headphones. Oh, you have them. Hold on. You have them. Wow. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing now because I want to go back to... <laughs> wow, it's weird. It's like we were just looking at that that character. Mm -hmm. um, so what's the deal with those teal headphones? Um, it's really just that I wanted to have a website color theme and these are my, these were my favorite headphones. I don't really use them for voiceover work as much. They're very well loved as you can oh, wow. see. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, this is my favorite color. And so I thought it would look cool if I incorporated these headphones into my website. I wish there were a more interesting story behind it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's just something I noticed because I was like, maybe it's a subtle, uh, a visual cue that like you're constantly in the studio recording. That's what I assumed it was. Yes. Yeah. 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 Totally. Well, it worked. I was like, oh, she's a professional. She's constantly recording all the time. That's oh. the vibe I was getting. Um, <laughs> and so if uh, if you were to voice that anime version of yourself, how would she sound? Um, an anime version of me would probably just sound like me, except mm -hmm. maybe pitched up because you know it's anime and she would yeah. still swear a lot. So it would not be a uh, safe for children anime. Got it. I swear a lot. I've really um, restrained myself this whole mm -hmm. interview. I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> yeah, no, it's cool. Well, I usually drop a little warning sign in front of some of my interviews in case there's like, you know, an F bomb. Warning. Paper but still more, swears a lot. <laughs> more than okay to swear. It's totally fine. Why is Raichu your favorite Pokemon? Uh, Raichu's just super cute. I don't know. I've always liked Raichu the best. Raichus are also, if you look in an anime, you think they're going to be small. They're huge. So like a Raichu Correct. comes up like here yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. or something. They're just really cool. I don't know. They're like Pikachu, but better. Right. Well, it always kind of uh, threw me off when I would hear Raichu and it would be like a very deep, it would be like Raichu. Yeah, and then I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah. So that always kind of stuck with me. How can people... Uh, stay in touch with you. Where can they find you on online? Oh, um, I'm active on Instagram and Twitter. 
Um, so my Twitter handle is Kate Love, and my Instagram handle is Kate Bristol V O, as in voiceover. And right now, you can hear me as Helly the Helicopter. If you have children um, who watch Robocarp Poli, it's on Netflix. So that's a fun project that I've been working on. That's cool. Are, do you see yourself doing more projects uh, that are tailored towards uh, younger children? Or have you? I have been on from time to time. It's really, I see myself working on projects that will pay the bills. So <laughs> whatever that's, jobs yeah. I can get. Yeah. Uh, which isn't to say I'll take anything, but you know what I mean? Like all, whatever is good, you know, it's very project. I mean, working on some very not safe for children stuff too, like anime wise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I like to run the gamut. I like to yeah. have variety. That's right. That's awesome. <laughs> um, well, I have nothing else to ask. I feel like I know you even better. And um, I just want to say thank you for being here. It's been a pleasure and an honor. and. Um, kick ass. Oh. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, thank you for being here. Uh, thank hope you to so much for having me. This was so fun. This was really, really nice. Thank you so much.